Uh, George came from to the UK for the holidays to Sweden when he was 22 years old and went to work at the Young World Magazine. Uh, since his career, that was two and a half years, the first reached the award that she sees in was the Norwegian Elkhound. She was instrumental in introducing the Swedish Brahms to the UK and later on she married our famous all around the Joe Carter. Now, she went to the Elizabeth Terriers reading in the North Terriers, also Lancashire Healers, and more recently she did her own involved with Kevin Corby, where she had great success. She has judged all around the world. Very important to have her here in Leeds this weekend. Please welcome our happy good judge, a household name of yours, Mr. Liz Gardner. Some of the Dachshunds are missing three club shows today, but we hope that they'll be able to join us before the group is completed. The group is made up of sight hounds and scent hounds. The scent hounds are shorter on the leg so they can get their noses down to the ground for hunting. The sight hounds are longer legged for galloping over long distances. They can see the quarry from afar and they are bred for galloping. So sight hounds and scent hounds.
And our first exhibit forward is the best of breed Afghan hound. 72 of them here today for two judges. Mrs. Viv Phillips, who judged the dogs, and Ms. Ann Lockett Davis judged the bitches. They agreed on best of breed as this dog, number 44. As its name suggests, the breed was developed in Afghanistan, working on the plains and mountains, a galloping breed, long-legged with a degree of elegance to it, a long, powerful jaw, making it fit for function to bring down and hold their quarry. One of the main features of the Afghan is this light lifting gait and the tail with a, a donut ring at the end. Should be light and effortless on the move. Our winning Afghan there. Number 44, thank you. The Basenji on the table has been sent forward by Colin Ashmore from an entry of 38. He chose this bitch, number 102, as best of breed. The breed is a native of the Congo in Africa, where it was used for working in the grasslands. Very athletic. It said that the outline of the Basenji should resemble a gazelle, being leggy and short-backed. Its unique feature is that it can't bark. It's a barkless dog. The breed has a yodeling sound when it's excited. The tightly curled tail over its back and this long swinging stride are features. This one is a tricolor. The sharp hooded ears and inquisitive expression with a little wrinkle on the skull. Our winning Afghan there, number 102. The first of the Bassett family is on the table now. It's the Bassett Fauve de Britannia. 22 of them here today for Ken Andrew. He chose this dog, number 116, as best of breed. The Bassett family all share one feature. The word Bassett means low or low slung, and they're all relatively low to ground. They were scent hounds. The Bassett Fauve takes its name, the word Fauve meaning fawn. So this russet gold color is the only color in the breed. It's harsh coated, a wiry coat which gives it little furnishings on the eyebrows and muzzle. But you can see he's keen to get his nose down to the scent now. The, the hounds are always keen to take in the scent. And he's being a real little scent hound. His hander might be calling him something else actually. <laughs> And now on to another of the Bassett family. The largest of the Bassett family is the Bassett Griffin Vaudienne, the Grand variety. There were 22 of them here today, and our winner is the dog number 147. Everything about the Grand is quite long. The long, fine ears draping down from the skull longish body and longish tail and the longest foreface of them but apart from that it has to be rustic it has to be wiry coated harsh protective top coat a softer undercoat and again he was a scent town he could get his nose down to the ground and it's thought that the long ears when the head is dropped encase the scent and keep them on the track of their quarry
Our winning Bassett Griffin, the Grand Bassett Griffin Vaudienne, number 147. And on the table, its smaller cousin, the Petit Bassett Griffin Vaudienne. Richard Bott judged 28 of them today and chose this bitch, number 167, as his best of breed winner. For some time, the Petit Bassett and the Grand Bassett were interbred. They could interchange their breeding lines. But in the mid 20th century, this was, they were separated as two separate breeds and not allowed to interbreed. The Petit is much more compact, lower to the ground. The head is shorter and the ears are shorter, as we see here, but still should have a rustic, dense coat. Become very popular as show dogs and as house companions. The Petit Bassett Griffin Vaudien, number 167. And now the Bassett Hound, sent forward by Kevin Young from an entry of 65 is this tan and white bitch, number 247. Our judge worked for a long time in a famous Bassett kennel, the Draymond Bassetts of Mrs. Minto. So she'll be looking at this with a specialist eye. The, the Bassett hand with which we're most familiar Solidly built, quite long in the body. Again, the long ears draping the, draping the head. The breeders have worked hard to make the breed more athletic, give it more ground clearance, and rid it of any exaggerations in skin, which cause problems in the eyes. So the Basset Hound breeders worked very hard and there is our winning Bassett, number 247. Beagles today were judged by specialist Kristen Theobald from an entry of 55. She chose this dog, number 297. Beagle, hugely popular as a family pet, but of course, at heart, it is still a hunting hound. And their owners will tell you that, if the let is off the lead, if there's a scent about, it's goodbye beagle. If you see a man in the park with an empty lead, the chances are it's a beagle he's lost. Everything about the beagle is unexaggerated. Well angulated at both ends, giving it a clean stride. A long, clean stride, level top line with a stern held high. The head should be have a soft expression. This one a tricolour. The winning beagle there, number two nine seven. Our judge now looking at the Bloodhound. Specialist Miss Liz Cudlip judged 13 of them today and chose this bitch, number 318, as best of breed. The, the Bloodhound can be traced back to medieval times as a hunting hound in the King's Forests also was developed to track human beings. Keen nose. Bloodhound means it can, it's a scent hound. Could track wounded deer, but its talents were used by the police and armed forces for tracking criminals. Long-legged with a lean, clean skull and long, fine ears, which have a slight twist in them.
Our winning bloodhound is number 318. And another long-legged hunter now, the Borzoi. 38 of them here today for Viv Phillips. She chose this bitch, number 350, as best of breed. This was the, the wolfhound of the Russian aristocracy in Tsarist Russia. Hugely prized for their elegance and beauty and their long, luxurious coats. They used to hunt in pairs, taking on wolves, one attacking from one side, one from the other side, till the wolf was brought down. The hunting festivals in Russia were very glamorous affairs with silk tents, carpets, and the, the boars always decked out with decorative collars and much prized for their beauty. The shape of them, long-legged for galloping, this arch over the loin for a propulsive muscular power to drive them on. So underneath that coat, there is a deep-bodied hunting hound, the Borzoi. Now forward is the distinctive silhouette of the Chineco Deletna. Its, its name tells us where it comes from. Mount Etna in Sicily, where it was a warren hound going after rabbits and other game, small game. Very nimble and athletic. It bears some resemblance to the larger pharaoh hound, which we'll see later. Again, clean line with a wedge-shaped head and distinctive large ears, a fine coat and skin, quite deep in the chest for stamina and hunting, and the tail carried like a scimitar. Our winning Chineco de Letna there is number 369. And I'm glad to say we've been joined by some more Dachshunds from the club shows, and here's one of them, standard long-haired Dachshund. 39 of them today for Ken Andrew. He chose this bitch, number 391, as best of breed. We have six varieties of Dachshund in this country. Three coats, that's the long coat we see here. Later we'll see the wire coat and the smooth. But this is the standard long-haired Dachshund. Known as Teckles or Badger dogs in their native Germany, where they had not only to catch bring down the game but also track it so that to have some athleticism the continental dachshunds are rather higher on the leg than we have here and a little shorter in the body but now with our changing standards we're becoming closer to the continental type in some of the in some of the varieties all should have the same conical shaped head, a long rib cage, not too long in the body, no exaggeration required. So there is the first of them, our winning long hair, number 391. And in a smaller mold, the miniature long haired variety, 39 of them, sorry, 47 of them today for Colin Ashmore. He chose this dog, number 457, as best of breed. Everything the same in its features, in a scaled down size. 
Sometimes the dachshunds are weighed at the show, and for the miniature, the maximum desirable weight is five kilograms or 11 pounds. And sometimes they are weighed before the class commences to see that they are close to that. You can be forgiving of a few ounces over, but the ideal is maximum of 11 pounds or five kilograms. One of the great challenges is getting all of the same features in a smaller compass. Our winning miniature long hair there is 457. And now on the table, the miniature smooth haired variety, Mark Kokosa. Judged a very good entry, 85 of them for, for him today. And he chose his dog, number 560. This is a black and tan. Of course, the miniature smooth is probably the most popular of the varieties as a household companion. It's said that the Dachshunds should be brave to the point of rashness, full of confidence. And the miniature smooth breeders have worked very hard. And the breed is now very popular for its confidence and its character, its handy size. The smooth coat is a pliable, thick skin to give it protection when working. And on the table now, the standard wirehead variety. 50 of them today for Colin Ashmore. His winner was this dog, number 625. Of course, the wire coat variety is characterized by its coat. A double coat, thick, wiry, top coat, softer undercoat, and we see the furnishings on the beard and eyebrows and a little bit on the legs. They should be well ribbed back. Important that the rib cage is long, the couplings are relatively short to give it a sturdy top line. Any exaggeration in any breed brings problems. And so you don't want them too long, which causes some disc problems in the, in the varieties. The breeders all working hard to get away from exaggeration. Always a look of great character in the wire coats. They look like wise little characters. And this one, obviously adoring his owner. Oh, yeah. There is our winning standard wire Number, again, a judge looking at its expression. Winner there, number 625. And the miniature wirehead variety, Pauline Sidgwick, judge 45 of them. Her winner was this dog, number 662. confidence this elegant head carriage and level top line and striding out all of the things desirable in all the six varieties On the continent, they, they have a smaller size than the miniature, known as the Caninchin Tekel, or rabbit dog, which are smaller and finer in build. There's our winning miniature wire, number 662. And now the 
Deerhound, sent forward by Mike Capel. From an entry of 20, he chose this bitch, number 685. As its name suggests, its original function was as a sight hound, bringing down deer, galloping and coursing. It's something like a, a greyhound with a rugged rough coat on top of it. The deer hound has great elegance in its curving outline, the curve over the loin. This long legs should have a deep chest for stamina and galloping capacity and always a beautiful wistful expression in the deer hound and small fine ears. There's the winning deer hound. Now forward, the greyhound, Robin Searle, judge 17 of them today, and chose this bitch, number 715, as best of breed. It's thought that the greyhound is the archetypal sighthound, and has, is in the ancestry of most of the other sighthounds. And we see the similarities. We've just seen the deerhound with its long legs, its deep chest and its curve over the loin. Here we have the greyhound with the same shape. Strong muscular arch over the loin. Depth in the chest for capacity and galloping and long legs for covering the ground. A long punishing jaw. and this long, lean neck. The winning greyhound there, number 715. And here is another exotic sighthound, the Ibethan hound. Graham Hill judged 11 of them today, and his winner was the bitch, number 731. Although it carries the name Ibiza in its title, it's thought that the breed might have developed first in Malta. It has some unique features, not only in its large ear, which can be held upright, but a rather upright shoulder and a shallow chest. Whereas we often like deep chests down to the elbow, it's not necessary or desirable in the Ibethan hound. It should, the brisket should be about an inch to two inches above the elbow, as we see here. Also unique in its gait, this hovering, hovering trot which it's exhibiting there. Can we have all the veterans in the hound group to bring one A now for pre-judging? That's all the veterans to bring one A for pre-judging in the hound group. And now the gentle giant of the group, it's the Irish Wolfhound. 38 of them here today for Kay Barrett. She chose this dog, number 736, as best of breed. His original function is made clear and his origins, the Irish Wolfhound. Should be a mixture of substance, but also athletic power. You have to be strong enough to bring down wolves, fast enough and athletic enough to keep up with them and overtake them and bring them down. <laughs> Curvaceous in outline, leggy and with a weatherproof coat. There is the winning Irish Wolfhound. And now the Norwegian elk hound. 24 of them here today, and the winner was this dog, number 782. 
And of course, this is the breed that our judge, Mrs. Cartage, first gave CCs to in this country many years ago. This is absolutely a functional hound. It should be thick, protective coat in shades of grey. The spitz characteristics in it are this tightly curled tail over its back, a wedge-shaped head, and this thick, weatherproof coat. Note also the lighter shades over the shoulders and withers. They are known as harness markings, much prized features. They are compact and strong. Our winning Norwegian elk hound. And now the Otter Hound. 11 of them here today, and our winner was this bitch, number 806. It's a breed which has been in peril for quite some years since the otter hunting was made Ill illegal and the, the major packs were disbanded. Only a handful of breeders keep the breed going, and when the packs were disbanded, Dogs from the Kendall Pack and the Dumfriesia Pack form the nucleus for the show breeders to carry on the breed. And thank goodness they have survived. They're a wonderful old, Eng old British breed. This elastic free gait, a weatherproof coat, which is a really dense coat. And of course, for working in water, they've got fairly big feet for paddling but also flat feet, which are webbed to give it more propulsive power when swimming. So there is the Otter Hound, a bitch, number 806. A breed which goes back to the ancient dynasties of the pharaohs now, the Pharaoh Hound, judged by Robin Searle, 14 of them here. His winner was the bitch, number 819. Dogs of this type are seen etched on the tombs of the Pharaohs. They were a great favorite in the ancient dynasties, the royal households, so much so that the dogs were revered and when they died, buried with their owners in the pyramids. It's a breed with distinctive outline, this long, clean head and upright ears, this long, arched neck, free of exaggeration, and this pliable coat and skin. There goes the winning Pharaoh Hound. And now on the table, the Portuguese Padengo. Graham Hill judged 13 of them. And his winner was this bitch, number 828. Three sizes of Padengos in its native Portugal. In actual fact, the Pharaoh Hound is a member and the Ibethan Hound is members of the Padengo family. But this, in this country, the smallest size. In, in Portugal, there were a little Warren Hound going after rabbits, going to ground. Great characters and hugely popular in Portugal as a family pet. And we can see why here. This is... Uh, very appealing in its character, alert, but they were bred as Warren Hounds to bring home the supper. There you are, <laughs> our very lively Padengo, number 828. Eight. 
a good entry of Rhodesian Ridgebacks today for Mike Capel. 92 of them here. He chose this bitch, number 903, as best of breed. This is a final call for all best veterans in the Hound Group. Please make your way to ring 1A when the judge is waiting for the, you. Thank you. The breed was developed and much prized by big game hunters in the settlement of Africa. It was developed in what was Rhodesia, now known as Zimbabwe, by big game hunters. They used to track lions and hold them at bay, cornering them and holding them there till the guns came. So it has to be a dog of athleticism, but also great courage. It takes its name from the ridge of hair which runs in reverse direction along its back. And now the Saluki, 34 of them for Chris Payne today. He chose the dog, 954 as best of breed. Much prized by their Bedouin owners. In the Middle East, sight hounds often carried in the saddle by the horse riding owners and put down when game was sighted. They were prized alongside the Arabian horses, so they're a thing of great beauty and a treasure for their owners. Great elegance and lightness of foot desired in the breed. And from the largest entry in the hand group, 110 whippets here today for Mrs. Perkins, breed specialist. She chose the bitch number 1022 as best of breed. The breed was developed in the north, it's thought by miners in Northumberland. From the Middle Ages, the Greyhounds were kept for nobility. The scaled down version, the Whippet, developed by the, the rural working class for bringing home the supper. One stage it was popular to have Whippet racing in the Northeast. But again, everything is about symmetry, about lines and elegance, the curving lines arched over the loin, beautiful, fine coat and skin, and a lovely expression. Hugely popular as house pets. And now from the import register, judged by Martin Sanders, we have the Griffon Fauve de Britannia. We saw the Basset Fauve earlier, the rough-coated fawn basset. Here we have some shared ancestry in the griffon. It comes from the longer-legged griffon family. Rough-coated hunting hounds to give greater size. But you, you see the same features in the head and ears, the wiry protective coat and the stern carried above the back. The Griffon Fauve there, coming from the import register. Now, there's a rich, large and assorted group for Liz Cartledge. She's had her hands on all of them. And now, just taking them all in, remembering what she's found on hands-on examination, and deciding which ones she would like to come out into her shortlist.
In comes the Afghan Hound, the Basenji, the Grand Basset Griffin Vaudien, and the Beagle. Down the line, the standard long haired Dachshund, the Greyhound comes forward, the Irish Wolfhound, and the Elkhound, and the Pharaoh Hound. And the Saluki and the Whippet. And there we have our shortlist for the Hound Group here. Well done to all of your, uh, the others making it thus far. So I think they're being sorted into some running order. Longest legs at the front, shortest legs at the rear. So uh, I think this Saluki will come up a bit further. The Dachshund knows its place. Short legs at the end. So. I think the shorter ones are being asked to stay back. Big hand of applause, ladies and gentlemen. There's our shortlist. The Wolfhound, the Afghan Hound, Greyhound and Pharaoh, Saluki, Norwegian Elkhound, and the Grand Basset Griffin Vaudier. Now, smaller in stature, but full of their own importance. Here are the shorts, the Basenji, Beagle, the Whippet, and the standard long-haired Dachshund. of them here. One of them will be coming back on Sunday to compete for best in show at Leeds. Now this is where our judge is deciding who's going to, which what four are going to make the places and then when she's done that she'll call for the boards and we'll share the excitement and seeing who's coming back on Sunday. The Pharaoh Hound, the Pharaoh Hound wins the group. In second place, the Afghan. For third place, the Grand Basset Griffin Vaudier. And for fourth spot. The Basenji, the Basenji takes fourth place. Well done. Well done all of you for making that shortlist. But it's the Pharaoh Hound we'll see back on Sunday as Hound Group winner leads 2023. A handshake for all of the finalists. The rosettes coming out for presentation. And we'll welcome Jonathan Wollstoneholm, the area's bu business manager for Royal Canin, sponsoring these finals. And thank you very much for your generosity, Jonathan, and the company. Royal Canin here. 
very happy owner. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for our judge, Liz Cartledge, be before we send the dogs on their lap of honour. The there they go. Hound winners, led by the Pharaoh Hound, Afghan, the Grand Basset and the Basenji. Now, the Pharaoh will stay for a photograph in the main ring, please. Afghan, Grom Bassas and Basenji to the Secretary's office, please, for your photographs. Secretary's office for the photographs. The Pharaoh will stay here. So there's our first group winner for Leeds 2023. Now, while you, we've been watching the best of breed winners and the group, the best puppy in every breed has been prejudged in an outside ring, and we'll be seeing them come in now. And I have the pleasure now of introducing the judge who's going to have the pleasure of all these youngsters this week, well known to you all, been in show dogs since he was a schoolboy, his mother before him with Clumber Spaniels, other Spaniards, but also he's made a great name for himself in the poodle world and in the Chinese crested and other toy breeds. Please welcome, well known to you all, Mr. Lee Cox. There, there are only two puppies which have not been prejudged. We'll see those on the end of the line, and uh, Lee will look at those in the main ring. But welcome the others who have been seen. Welcome them in now, led in by the Afghan Hound. Borzoi, Basset Fauve, the Grand Basset Griffin Vaudien, and the Petit, the Basset Hound, Beagle, the Bloodhound, the Daxon family now, standard long, mini long, Standing smooth and mini smooth. The standard wire. We give them a bit of clearance before the long legs of the deer hound. The Norwegian elk hound. It, in comes the pharaoh hound. I missed the Ibethan hound there, the Padengo, the Saluki comes next, and the Whippet, and the Black and Tan American Coon Hound, and in comes the Otter Hound, Rhodesian Ridgeback, and there we have our best puppy winners in the hound group. 
I think that the two that have to be seen comes forward now, the Otter Hound. A breed developed to judge Otter working on the riverbanks and in the water. They have to be strong swimmers. Hence they want big feet for swimming and clawing up the riverbanks. A long, noble head with finely draped ears. That thick, waterproof undercoat. And now the Rhodesian Ridgeback, the other one which couldn't be present. The hander was otherwise engaged. And here is the Rhodesian Ridgeback, number 903. Sent forward by Mike Capel. Just getting her into a stride there. For many of these puppies, of course, it's the first time they've been in this environment, a, a big covered ring on grass. So, testament to their good temperament that they're all making the most of themselves. There we are. The rest have been seen, so it won't take as long to see, to share the Cox's choices. Forward, the Basenji, the Beagle, the standard long-haired Dachshund, and the standard smooth Dachshund. The Norwegian Elkhound and the Deerhound come forward. And the Ibethan Hound. And the Black and Tan Coon Hound comes forward. And there we are, well done to all of you others Wishing you a good future with these youngsters. Now, and round they go. Give them a big hand, support them, ladies and gentlemen. There's a Basenji, a bitch puppy. And there's the Beagle. Next, the first of the Dachshunds, the standard long hair. And the standard smooth hair Dachshund. Next, the long legged elegance of the deer hound. And here comes the Norwegian elk hound. It's Distinctive harness markings over the shoulders. And there, the hovering gait of the Ibethan Hound. And there is the Black and Tan Coon Hound, a breed developed in America for hunting raccoon. They have several varieties of them in America. Now the boards have been clapped forward by our judge. Who's coming back to compete for best puppy and show on Sunday afternoon? Lee's gonna tell us now. The Beagle, the Beagle comes forward. Second place to the Deerhound. For third spot, it's the 
Black and Tan Coon Hound. And fourth spot, the Norwegian Elk Hound. Well done to all of the all of you and well done to all of the others making it this far. So it's this very smart beagle puppy will be coming back. Number 309 in the catalogue. So what a happy ending to their Friday afternoon in this big ring. Now we'll see Lee again later. Lap of honor time, ladies and gentlemen, our winning puppies led by the Beagle. So that's her photograph for the mantelpiece, I'm sure, for the owner and the judge. Now, from the younger generation to the most mature generation, and that's the veterans. They've been prejudged, and we'll be seeing them now. And the winner, all of the group winners, will come back for best in, best veteran in show on Sunday. My pleasure to introduce the gentleman who is going to have the pleasure of judging all the veterans this week. Well known to you all, Mr. Richard Kinsey. And he's seen them all and prejudged them all outside. So in they come. Please cheer in the Afghan, the Basset foe, the Basset, the Beagle, the Miniature Smooth, the Standard Smooth, the Miniature Wire. Next comes the Greyhound, the Rhodesian Ridgeback. The Saluki and the Whippet. And there are veteran hounds.
Now, the, the board's a man of decision. He's made his mind up, seen them all going in the outside ring. One of them coming forward now to represent the veteran hounds on Sunday. We're just waiting for the handshake. It's the Whippet, the Whippet's call forward. In second place, the Rhodesian Ridgeback. For third spot, the Beagle. And in, f in fourth place, the Miniature Wire Dachshunds. So well done for all you veterans. Thank you for representing your breeds here. So the rosettes coming out. The Whippet coming back on Sunday to compete for best veteran. Richard Kinsey handing out these rosettes. I'd be very happy to have those blue and yellow Leeds rosettes. So, lap of honour for our winning veterans, led by the Whippet. And there's a nice photograph, the owner and judge. We are awaiting several best of breed winners in the gun dog group to make the collecting ring. So if uh, you've had best of breed in your breed in the gun dogs, please make your way to the collecting ring. And a thank you to Mr. Kinsey. We'll see him later this afternoon with the gun dog veterans.
two bars are the four. And the fact that you pack up on the last one. Almost ready, ladies and gentlemen. We hope that you've enjoyed the new layout at Leeds this year. It's taken a lot of money and work to get this off the ground. And uh, we hope you like the layout with the in and out rings for all of the breeds. And we've been blessed with good weather today, so let's hope it continues for the weekend. We're almost ready with the Gundog group. Mr. Walshaw, we're nearly ready with the best of breed win. Almost ready. English, bring up. And now as we almost react, my pleasure to introduce our judge for the Gundog group this year. 
It's his first appointment at group level, but he has years of experience. I can tell you I've known him as a schoolboy. He started showing Labradors as a 13-year-old schoolboy and made her up. I made, I made, and he made his first champion up when he was 16 years of age. And since then, he's had other Labrador champions and means closely connected to the breed. He first awarded CCs 31 years ago and is now approved for six gun dog breeds and one hound breed. In recent years, he's been very clever showing his breeding skills with beagles and he's made up a total of 35 UK champions, which I think is a phenomenal record. We're very welcome, we're very pleased to welcome him today to Leeds for his first Gundar group. Please welcome Mr. David Craig. Time for the dogs. In comes the Bracco Italiano. And the Brittany. Next, the English Setter. The German, sorry, the Gordon Setter comes next. The German Shorthead Pointer. And the German Wirehead Pointer. The German Longhead Pointer and the Hungarian Vizsla. The Hungarian Wirehead Vizsla, the Irish Red and White Setter, followed by the Irish Setter. Next comes the Italian Spinoni, the Legotto Romagnolo, the large Munsterlander, the Pointer, the Chesapeake Bay Retriever and the Curly Coated Retriever. The Flat Coat comes next. The Golden Retriever. The Labrador Retriever. The Nova Scotia Duck Toller. The First of the Spaniels, the American Cocker Spaniel. The Clumber Spaniel and the Cocker Spaniel and the Field Spaniel. Next, it's the Irish Water Spaniel, the Sussex and the Welsh Springer. The Spanish Water Dog comes next and the Weimarana. From the... Import register, the Portuguese pointer, and there we have our lineup for the Gunda Group Leeds 2020. Just moving round to get this large group in spaced out positions. A quick look round, taking in the outline and balance of the breeds. <laughs> so they can now relax and stand back, back to the while our judge examines the First of our best of breed wins, the Bracco Italiano. Sandra Marshall judged a very nice entry of 48 today. And she chose this dog, number 1125, as best of breed. A relative newcomer to the show rings in this country. They're now well established. 
have challenge certificates on offer. The Bracco Italiano is a result of developing breed from a mixture of hounds and gun dogs. A versatile hunt, point and retrieve breed, which means it can do everything a hunter wants. It can find the game, retrieve the game, sometimes pointing as well. And here's another versatile breed, the Brittany. Six of them here today for Jean Byrne. Her winner was this dog, number 1147. Could a member of the medical team make their way to the secretary's office straight away? Thank you. The breed used to be known as the Brittany Spaniel, but it's more versatile than Spaniel work. It's got an acute scenting powers, compact and cobby, with moderate angulation at both ends. Gives it this brisk stride rather than a long reaching gait. Slight slope from the withers down to the croup. The first of the setters now forward. The English setters judged today by Frank White. 52 of them here. He chose the Orange Belton Dog, 1178, as best of breed. Was known, developed, two main developers, Mr. Lavrock, and it's sometimes known as the Lavrock Setter in Field Trial World. Setters get their name from the way they work. When they scent game, they freeze and go into a set to indicate the whereabouts of game. Developed by Mr. Lavrock and Purcell Llewellyn, the two main developers of the breed. Now forward the German shorthead pointer. Christine Morgan has judged 40 of them today and chose this dog, number 1210, as best of breed. This is the absolute epitome of a working gun dog. Everything functional about the German shorthead pointer. <coughs> An exaggerated confirmation with good angulation front and rear. Short back, well ribbed up with good depth of chest and this coarse coat. It may be a short coat, but it's short and dense to give it protection when working. The German shorthead pointer, number 1210. Now forward, the German wirehead pointer. Sandra Marshall judged 26 of them and chose this dog, number 1260, as best of breed. It bears some similarities with its cousin, the German short hair, but the white hair is a little heavier in build, a little bigger in stature, and of course topped by this double coat, a soft undercoat, and a wiry top coat, which gives it some moustache and furnishings of the eyebrows and a little on the legs. It's thought that it was developed from the short hair with the input of the griffon and wire-coated working dogs of Germany. The German wirehead pointer. And now the rarest of the German pointing breeds, the German long-haired pointer. They were judged today by Jackie Ward. Eight of them here, and her winner was this bitch, number 1279. 
a solid liver. We see them also in the party colour or what's called a trout colour. They are functional working breed, developed with perhaps some setter and spaniel blood as an input into the German pointers. There's some similarity to a breed we'll see later, the Munsterlander, another German breed. And now the Gordon Setter comes forward. 39 of them here today for Peter Upton. He chose this dog, number 1308, as best of breed. The Gordon Setter is the heaviest of the Setter breeds and is seen only in this black and tan color, rich chestnut markings on a black coat. Takes its name from the estate where it's developed by the Duke of Gordon in Scotland. In the early days of the breed, the Duke of Gordon's kennels housed dogs of a variety of colors, but with selecting, selective breeding, the black and tan is now the color which is predominant and in the breed standard. The winning Gordon setter there is number 1308. Now forward the Hungarian Vizsla, judged by Peter Upton, who was a specialist in this breed. And from a good entry of 53, he chose the dog 1347 as best of breed. thought that the, the Magyars of Hungary brought the breed into mainland Europe and that formed the basis for the breed being re-established after the world wars. It's a dog of moderation, moderation in bone, rich russet red colour, the skin and coat have a slight greasy feel to them. Everything in moderation for the Hungarian Vizsla. And here's its cousin, the Hungarian wirehead Vizsla, Linda Upton, breed specialist, judged an entry of 30 and chose this bitch, number 1405, as best of breed. It's thought that the wirehead was developed from the first mating between a Hungarian Vizsla and a German Pointer, and that formed the basis of this breed. Obviously, this distinguishing feature is the wire coat, but they are a little bit heavier than the Vizsla. There's our winner, the bitch number 1405. Irish red and white setters today were judged by Patsy Hollings, an entry of 19 for her, and she chose this bitch, number 1415, as best of breed. It's thought that the Irish red and white setter was the original Irish setter, but when the red setter was developed, it instantly became more popular and the Irish red and white became the poor relation. And post-war, the breed was in peril of becoming extinct. Only a handful of them remained and a handful of breeders working together got the breed back into some workable numbers. Now, thankfully, much more popular. Here is the Irish setter, 
97 of them today for Flo Barker and she chose this bitch number 1525 the Irish red setter is the raciest of the setters which means it's built on flowing lines beautiful quality in the head from its raised eyebrows almond shaped eyes a slight slope from withers down to the croup and the hallmark of all the setters is slashing tail action denoting temperament The winning Irish there, number 1525. Now for the Italian Spinoni. This is Philippa Cottrell, judged 30 of them today and chose this bitch, number 1560. A breed with a distinctive top line and an almost human expression. The judge looking at its eyes and its large spongy nose and big nostrils to give it scenting power. The Spinoni has thick skin for pliability and protection when working. It is an all-purpose hunt, point and retrieve. The top line has a dip behind the withers and a rise to the loin before fall over the croup. There is our winning Italian Spinoni, number 1560. And now a breed making great strides in this country, the Legotto Romagnolo. 26 of them today for Christine Morgan. She chose this bitch, number 1577, as best of breed. A native of Italy, where it was developed in the north, in the marshy areas of Romagnolo, Romagna. It was a duck retriever. However, the marshy lands dried up and the scenting powers of the Legotto were used and developed and retrained for hunting truffles, for which they're now renowned. There is the Legotto Romagnolo. And now the large Munsterlander being examined by Mr. Craig. 29 of them today for Chris Atkinson. He chose this dog, number 1600, as best of breed. We saw the German long-haired pointer earlier. We see some similarities in the build and outline of this. Selective breeding brought the large Munsterlander to this black and white color only. Black and white or blue roan speckled as we see here. Often a black head or a blaze on the head. There is our large Munsterlander. Now from an entry of 69 pointers, Chris Atkinson has sent forward this bitch, number 1676, as best of breed. One of the supreme scenting machines, the pointer. Going back to the 18th century, where it was hugely popular as a stylish working gun dog. We see references in the novels of Jane Austen to the landed gentry and nobility using pointers. 
valuing them for their stylish working over large expanses of land. It takes its name from its way of working, rather like the English setters. It goes into a freeze and points. It should be a series of graceful flowing curves. Its head held high to take in the scent through its large nostrils. There's our winning pointer. And now the first of the retrievers, the Chesapeake Bay Retriever. Richard Bott judged 17 of them and chose this dog number 1693 as best to breed. Hails from North America, and this must be the most weatherproof of all the retrievers. Bred to go in the icy waters as a duck retriever in Chesapeake Bay, North America. It's built fit for function with this particularly important coat, a hard top coat, greasy protective undercoat, protective against cold and water, big barrel ribs for flotation and stamina in the water. There is the Chesapeake Bay Retriever. And now the curly-coated retriever, Anthony Allen, judged 37 of them today and chose this dog, number 1730, as best of breed. The curly coat is the largest of the retriever family, characterized by this coat, which is dense, curly, crisp curls, covering the entire body, it has a molded head, slightly wedge-shaped in the head, deep-bodied, with good spring of rib for working in the water. They make wonderful working dogs, come also in liver, but black is the more frequently seen color, as we see here, the winner, number 1730. And now the flat-coated retriever, David Shields, judged an entry of 85, and chose this bitch, number 1750, as best of breed. This is the raciest of the retriever breeds, which means it's a little bit longer, perhaps lighter in build, flowing outline, was once known as the wavy coated retriever developed with a little bit of spaniel and other retrievers in the bloodline the founder of the kennel club mr suellen lewis was one of the great supporters and patrons of the breed Mr. Swallis, Evelyn Shirley, who founded the Kennel Club, a breeder and very successful exhibitor of the flat coat. Now the Golden Retriever. A good entry today for two judges, 161 of them today, so making it the biggest entry in the gun dog group. Trevor Smith judging dogs and Louise and his wife, Louise Smith judging the bitches. The winner was the bitch, number 1942. Developed in Scotland, the Goosecan Estate, where the club recently had a fantastic show and meeting of hundreds of golden retrievers. Not only hugely popular in the show ring, but a fantastic household companion.
and now on to a breed with which Mr. Craig is very familiar, the Labrador Retrievers. Penny Williams judged 114 of them today and chose this dog. Number 2049 as best of breed. This is a chocolate or liver Labrador. We're perhaps more used to seeing the black or the yellow. This is the third of the colors permitted in the breed standard. Black, yellow, and chocolate, the only three recognized colors. Big barrel ribs, double coat, an otter tail, that's thickly coated, fairly short tail, acting as a rudder in the water. And here is the Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever, Martin Reese, judged 55 of them today, and chose this dog, number 2131, as best of breed. Developed in Canada, the area of Nova Scotia, it was used as a toller, which means it was a lure dog. It was used on the shores of lakes. The, the gunman used to make, keep it occupied and busy retrieving sticks. And its activity and its wagging tail used to attract the ducks within distance of the guns. So that what was a taller dog. It comes only in this rich chestnut color with some white markings, perhaps on the feet, the head, the tip of the tail. The tail carried rather high, higher than the other retrievers. Now it's the first of the Spaniel family, the American Cocker, judged today by Frank White. He chose this bitch, number 2174, as best of breed. The American Cocker was developed from Cocker Spaniel blood exported to the America in the 20th century, a dog called Obo II, sent to America and helped the breed, the English Cocker and the American. The breed was not split until the 1940s. A group of American breeders decided to go along a different route from the English Cocker, and here is their result. The American Cocker is slightly smaller, a sloping top line with a high set tail and of course the most obvious feature the longer coat. The head is quite different being more domed in the skull and shorter in the foreface. There is the American Cocker best of breed winner number 2174. Now forward is the Columbus Spaniel. Anthony Allen judged them today, 24 of them here. And his winner was this bitch, number 2210. The Columbus Spaniel takes its name from Columba Park. We're not so far from that, it's in Nottingham. The Duke of Newcastle lived there and he was a keen proponent of the breed, thought some of the stock might have come from France. It's thought to have some hound in its background. It is a, one of the more substantial of the Spaniels. Our judge now looking at the Cocker Spaniel. The breed today has been judged by Brian Foster for an entry of 110. He's chosen this bitch, number 2247, as his best of breed winner. It earns the epithet the Merry Cocker from its ever wagging tail, which it's illustrating perfectly now, even on the table. The tail wags the dog. The Cocker Spaniel should be 
compact, big ribs, very merry, and you see from the outline that the tail set and croup of the Cocker Spaniel is quite different from the American Cocker. This is a rounded croup and a low set tail. There is our winning Cocker Spaniel, number 2247. Ever wagging tail. Now forward, the English Springer, sent forward by specialist Richard Bott from an entry of 49. He's chosen this bitch, number 2379, as best to breed. This is the highest on the leg of the land spaniels, which means it's had good length of leg. It's rectangular in the body. It's a and characterized, characterized by this long swinging stride in front, swinging from the shoulder. Rectangular in shape. The head of medium width and with a soft melting expression. There is the winning English Springer, number 2379. Our judge now looking at the field spaniel. Patsy Hollings judged 15 of them today. And her winner was this dog, number 2404. Field spaniel, one of the ancient land spaniels, developed at first in the Midlands. Different proportions to the others, it's a long, noble head, clean cut under the eyes, great nobility in the head, moderate length of body and leg, it should go with a long, unhurried stride, great nobility in its expression. This one, a liver, they also come in black and roan, black and tan and liver and tan. Our judge now looking at the Irish Water Spaniel, a breed with which he's been a successful exhibitor. 19 of them today for Jackie Ward. She chose this bitch, number 2419, as her best of breed winner, the bitch. Although it's classified as a Spaniel, when it does its working tests, it runs with retrievers. It's thought that the poodle plays some part in its development, in the head shape and in the coat. But underneath that coat, there's big barrel ribs and a sturdy body and a very clownish temperament, full of fun. Our judge now going over the lowest of the spaniels lowest in that it's got the shortest legs the Sussex Spaniel 29 of them here for Jackie Ward she chose as her best of breed winner this dog number 7420 solidly built should be golden liver in color a strong head frowning expression Now, the Welsh Springer, Daphne Bailey, judged a good entry of 53 today and chose this bitch, number 2477, as best of breed. The Welsh Springer comes only in this rich chestnut and white color. The Springer Spaniels get their name from their 
function went before gunpowder was invented. The dogs were used to flush the birds forward into nets where they were captured. And the, when they were sent forward, it was known as springing forward to flush the game, the Springer Spaniels. And now here's a versatile gun dog, the Spanish water dog. 27 of them here today for Christine Schofield. She has chosen this bitch, number 2536, as best to breed. I say versatile because in its native Spain, not only is it used as a gun dog, but as a water dog, bringing in fishing nets, herding shoals of fish, believe it or not, and it has this rustic, thick, protective coat. Can be clipped perhaps once or twice a year, but it must remain absolutely rustic and untrimmed. The Weimaraners today, 39 of them, for Tanya Gardner, she chose this dog, number 2545, as best to breed. Again, another versatile hunt point and retrieve, known as the grey ghost dogs, because of their silver grey colour, their light eyes, blue or yellow when excited, in their expression. They come also in a rarer, long-coated variety. Here is our winner today, the dog number 2545. Our judge sending them round to look at their top lines and their side gate and their tail carriage. And now from the import register, the Portuguese pointer sent forward by Martin Saunders. He chose this dog, number 2589. Hugely popular in its native Portugal. We saw our pointer earlier. This is a smaller variety of pointer. Coming only in this rich red and white. The head heavier than our pointer and shorter in the muzzle but again with big nostrils to take in the scent. Our import register winner there, the Portuguese pointer 2589. Now, shortlisted, the Brittany. A long walk down the line to the Spinoni. The flat-coated retriever and the Labrador retriever and the pointer. The Irish water spaniel comes forward the Welsh Springer, the Spanish Water Dog, and the Varmrana. There's our shortlist. Thank you for those leaving the ring. Well done on your day today. And we have the correct numbers for the dogs now, and I'll let you know the correct numbers as they come out. So there is the winning Brittany, number 1147, a dog.
Round he goes, showing off that brisk Brittany stride. And he's the Italian Spinoni. The Italian Spinoni. A bitch, number 1560. The choice of Mrs. Philippa Cottrell. And round she goes. There's the pointer. The pointer sent forward by Chris Atkinson, a bitch, number 1676. And the head held her high, using her nostrils to take in the scent. And here's the happy, ever wagging tail of the flat coat retriever. Sent forward by David Shields, a bitch, number 1750. And from his original breed, the Labrador Retriever, this chocolate Labrador male, number 2049, the choice of Penny Williams today. Riding out. And still wagging the, the Blue Roan Cocker Spaniel. Choice of Brian Foster today, this Blue Roan bitch. Her number is 2335. There she goes. The clownish temperament of the Irish Water Spaniel. Always loving the big occasion. Number 2412, this bitch sent forward by Jackie Ward. And here is the Welsh Springer dog, sent forward by Daphne Bailey, number 2505. Here's the Spanish water dog. The dog number 2521 sent forward by Christine Schofield. Round he goes. Very happy in the big ring here. And finally, it's the Vimarana. The dog set forward by Tanya Gardner, number 2539. There he goes. Now, from this list of 10, one of them is going to come back on Sunday to represent the Gundog group in the best in show judging. Though the boards have been called for. And soon we'll see where the handshake is going for the winner of the Gundog group. It's heading over. The pointer, the pointer wins the Gundog group. In second spot, the Irish Water Spaniel. In third place, the Weimarana. And for fourth spot, it's the flat-coated retriever. Flat-coated retriever in fourth spot. Well done to all of the others. And uh, I'm sure you'd like to give a big round of applause to our judge doing his first gun dog group at Leeds this year. Well done, Mr. David Craig.
the pointer. Very happy handler. Rosettes going out. So it's the pointer we'll see on Sunday. Uh, Jonathan Wollstoneholm representing Royal Cannon, giving out the vouchers, very generous of them. Lap of honour time, ladies and gentlemen. Lead off, the pointer, winner of the Gunda Group, leads 2023. So photographs for the winner in here, the others to the secretary's office please, second, third and fourth to the secretary's office for their photographs. And we're ready now for the puppy groups. There's only two to be seen in here. So please welcome back Lee Cox, our judge for the puppy groups. And in come the puppies, sent in by our steward, Mr. Walshaw. Here they come. The Spinoni, English setter, German short hair, German wire hair. In comes the Gordon setter, the Vizsler, the Irish setter. The Legotto, large Munsterlander and pointer puppy coming next. The flat coat puppy and the Labrador. The Nova Scotia duck toller. The American cocker, Clumber Spaniel. The English Springer puppy. The Field Spaniel. The Sussex. The Welsh Springer. The Barmarana, the, I believe we've got the Hungarian wirehead visitor coming. The Cortol Griffon puppy is coming in now. From the import register, the Hungarian wirehead pointer and the German longhead pointer, the Spinoni. And there we are, there are our gun dog puppies. Now remember, many of them have not been in this big ring atmosphere before, but how, look, how they look to be enjoying it. A great advert for pedigree dogs. Soundness of temperament.
Only two to be seen, the Hungarian wirehead puppy. Hungarian wirehead Vizsla puppy here. The number is 1405. This is the bitch puppy, the choice of Linda Upton. And now the German long haired pointer is forward. Jackie Ward judged the breed and chose this bitch puppy number 1282 as her best of breed. As I said, the most rare of the German long haired pointer. The most rare of the German pointers. Solid brown, brown with white markings, brown roan and trout coloured, some of the colours listed in the breed standard. And the Italian Spinoni puppy. A bitch puppy, number 1560. <laughs> That's the last one to be seen by Lee Cox. And our shortlist coming, being called out now, the Bracco Italiano, the German wirehead pointer, the Lagotta Romagnolo, the pointer, American Cocker and Columbus Spaniel, the English Springer Spaniel. Out comes the Welsh Springer, the Varmarana and the Italian Spinoni. Thank you to all of those leaving the ring. I hope you've enjoyed your day and I hope the pups have enjoyed their experience in the big ring. They did very well indeed. Good luck for the future. Well done to you all. And here they go. Give them some support, ladies and gentlemen. There's the Bracco Italiano. Here is the German wirehead pointer. And from Italy, the Legato Romagnolo. Here's a pointer, the black and white pointer. And the American Cocker Spaniel. And the Columbus Spaniel, one of Mr. Cox's own specialist breeds.
Here's the English Springer Spaniel Bitch. And here's the Welsh Springer Spaniel. The Vibrana puppy comes, comes next, enjoying her time, obviously. Very relaxed here. And finally, the Italian Spinoni. Ten puppies forward, all wanting to win this award, which brings them back on Sunday. The, the clap of the hands, you've been summoned with the boards. Where is the handshake going? It's going to... The English Springer Spaniel wins the Gun Dog Puppy Group. In second place, the Italian Spinoni. For third place, the Van Rana. And in fourth place, the Columbus Spaniel. So well done. But the English Springer will see back on... Sunday. And there's a, a Mr. Cox's lineup for the Gundog Puppies. We're going to get a picture with the judge. We're just getting an official one, Mr. Smith. So so, lap of honor time. Mr. Smith, lead off your English Springer. There you are. There's our winning, our winning gun dogs. Mr. Smith, you stay behind. You are getting a photograph. Are the others to the secretary's office. I. Oh. Just, just the winner, please, for this one. So, the Springer comes forward for a photograph. I heard the handler saying, can I have a photo with the judge? Well, here he is. He's getting his wish. And there's a very nice photo for the owner and for the judge, our winning gun dog puppy, the English Springer Spaniel, 2379. I'm sure that it'll be on the mantelpiece. So well done. And we'll see you back on Sunday to compete for best puppy in show. Now, t time for our last event of the day now, the Gundog Veterans. Please welcome back our judge. Here he comes, Richard Kinsey. Bring Come on in, Richard. 
And our gun dog veterans are all ready. Please welcome in the Bracco Italiano, English setter, German shorthead pointer and Gordon setter, Vizsla, Irish setter, Lagotto, Chesapeake Bay Retriever and Flat-Coated Retriever and Golden Retriever, Sussex Spaniel, Welsh Springer Spaniel, Spanish Water Dog, the Varmrana, and here we have a long-haired Varmrana, something of a rarity that we see in the big ring here. So that's a nice lineup of gun dog veterans here. They've all been prejudged, so uh, Mr. Kinsey, not a man to waste time. There is a shortlist here the Bracco, German shorthead pointer, the Irish setter. The Legato comes forward. The gold, uh, is it the golden retriever? Which retriever? The flat coat, the flat coat retriever and the Spanish water dog. So thank you to all the other lovely veterans. Thank you for the others leaving the ring now. We're just clearing the ring and then I think we're going to see them go round by themselves. There is the Bracco Italiano veteran. That's a dog. And here is the German shorthead pointer. A dog also set forward by Christine Morgan. Here is the Irish setter, another dog, Flo Barker's choice here. The Legotto Romagnolo, a bitch, sent forward by Christine Morgan. Here's the happy flat coat coming next, a dog sent forward by David Shields. And finally, the Spanish water dog. So the boards are coming out. Last winner of the day now. Thank you for staying behind to watch these group finals, ladies and gentlemen. I hope some of you will manage to get back to see the climax of judging on Sunday. And it will include the Bracco Italiano, best veteran in the gun dog group. In second place, the Irish setter. And for, for third spot, the Legato Romagnolo. And in fourth place, the German shorthead pointer. So there they are, our winning veterans. Well done, all of you. Flat coat and Spanish water dog leaving the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, I know it's time to go home. We've done pretty well. It's only 20 to 6, two groups done. And we hope that some of you might get back on Sunday. If not, we hope to see you next year. And in the meantime, travel home safely and stay well. And thank you for staying with us. But before you go, one last round of applause for Mr. Kinsey, the judge and for our winning veterans, led off by the Bracco Italiano. So safe journeys home everyone. Hope you've enjoyed your day at Leeds and hope we'll see you here next year. Good night.